Hi, everyone. This is Spencer with a quick message before today's episode. On February 3rd, 2020, we lost a member of the Toronto Argonauts family as Willie Wood passed away at the age of 83. Willie Wood was the Argos head coach from 1980 to 1981 and, of course, is the current head coach during the season of our show. This week's episode and all other remaining episodes from the 1980 season were recorded prior to his death. So if we make any comments or jokes about him during an episode that could be seen as macabre in light of his passing, please know that was not our intention at the time. When Alex and I started the show, we didn't know anything about Willie Wood. Learning about him and the other Argonauts from the early 1980s has been one of the great joys of this show. Willie Wood was a great man. He was the first African-American head coach in the CFL. He was an outstanding safety and eight-time pro bowler for my favorite NFL team, the Green Bay Packers, and he had a key interception that helped Green Bay win their very first Super Bowl. In 1989, he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Sadly, after his professional football career was over, all those hits began to take a toll. Late in life, Willie Wood suffered from dementia. There's a great New York Times article about this that we will link to in the show notes, but it's quite sad. Willie Wood is a reminder of what football players are asked to endure and that we as fans must demand that the owners and the league take care of our players during and especially after their playing careers are over. We'd like to dedicate this week's episode to the memory of Willie Wood. Our thoughts and well wishes are with his family and former teammates. This one's for you, coach. It is an age of Canadian football domination. In the West, the Edmonton Eskimos are a dynasty without equal. Behind the quarterback tandem of Tom Wilkinson and Warren Moon, the Eskimos won five consecutive Great Cup championships between 1978 and 1982. In the East, four teams battle it out through a six-game season to see who will meet Edmonton in the championship game. The Toronto Argonauts have not hoisted a Grey Cup since 1952. Will this be their year? Let's find out. This is Third and Roll. Welcome to Third and Roll, a Canadian football board game podcast. This is the podcast where we play the 1985 board game Canadian Armchair Football and role play a Toronto Argonauts broadcast. My name is Spencer. This is my brother Alex. Hello. Today is episode 19. This is the final game of the regular season. The Argos are at home against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. I am calling the plays and rolling the dice for Toronto, and Alex is doing the same for Hamilton. We are getting ready to start the second quarter, so let's take you now up into the booth with the play-by-play action of Edward Welch and Norman Knuckleburger. Edward, take it away. Welcome back to the show, everybody. The Argos have a short field in front of them now after a fumble on the punt return by the Hamilton Tiger Cats. It's going to be first and 10 Argos from the Hamilton 31 yard line. We've got Jackson under center. Jackson handing the ball off to Metcalf. It's a draw play. And Metcalf picks up four. So that is going to be second and six now, bringing the ball down to the Hamilton 27-yard line. Jackson going right back to Metcalf here. It is going to be a pitch out to the left. And Metcalf gets pushed back. The down. That's a loss of two on the play. It's going to push the ball back to the 29-yard line. So this is going to be bringing up third and eight now for the Argos. You gotta be kidding me, field goal! Come on! And Willie Wood is not thinking about it. He is bringing onto the field. Zenon and Rishishin. Zenon with an opportunity here to kick a field goal to give the Argos a lead over his former team. Because Zenon, of course, played for the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the 1979 season. He is back in double blue and looking to take the East Division from his former teammates. So from the 29-yard line, we have Zenon. And the kick is up. And it's wide. If he had held the ball laces out like you're supposed to. It's wide. That ball was far enough, but it was to the left. And it's gone into the end zone for only a single point. That is, going back to the last game, that is three consecutive missed field goals for Zenon Andrew Shishin. He's human, Jim. Everything checks out perfectly. 
And the attention span of football fans is generally pretty short. And uh, if you miss your last three kicks, they forget about all the great kicks you made before. Xenon's not the most popular guy in town right now. Wow, and only from 29 yards out, from the 20, a kick from the 29-yard line. But, you know, there's still nothing like getting that first blood, that first point. It's like a sword fight where you just, like, give somebody a little scratch. That's fair enough there, Norman. So, yes, it is one nothing Argos here early in the second quarter. This is Chad Owens, the flying Hawaiian and former receiver for the Toronto Argonauts. You're listening to Third and Roll. Somehow the Tiger Cats are managing so far to dodge damage after they seem to be doing everything wrong. How is that possible? And yet are just managing to squeak through. Let's see what they can do on their next drive. So after the missed field goal, Zenon is on for the kickoff. So kicking from the 45-yard line, that is a 60-yard kick by Zenon, which will put the ball down to the Hamilton 5-yard line. And on the return, the Hamilton Tiger Cats pick up 15. So that is going to be a first down Hamilton from their own 20-yard line. So we've got Marler going for the pass from option. That ball is complete for 10 yards to Clarkson. And Clarkson gets brought down for no yards after the catch. But that's still enough for a Hamilton first down, be first and 10 from their 30-yard line. Marler back in the huddle. They are thinking about what they're going to do. Are they going to go back to the run? He is handing it off to Crawford. It's a fake reverse. And Crawford gets past Clark and past Ron Southwick even. He was wagging his finger there as he was running by his great foe. And only Preston Young was there to stop what have been a sure touchdown. But that's a 25-yard pickup there for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Could have done more. I could have done so much more. Taking them right to that sea line, right to the center line. The field in perfect symmetry. Wow, so 55 yards to go for Hamilton. Marler wants it all. Marler finds Clarkson over the middle. That's a pickup of 30 yards. And Clarkson picks up an additional three. So, wow, Hamilton moving the ball with two big plays here, and they've got a first down at the Argos 22-yard line. I know it's easy to say after it worked, but I love that call of uh, going for the long pass on first down there. Nobody was expecting it. Marler wants to slow things down here with a draw play. Hands it off to Crawford. And Crawford picks up five. So that's going to bring up a second and five now. Hamilton deep in Argos territory, second and five. Right back to Crawford for an off left tackle. And Clarkson picks up three before he is met by... Bruce Clark, that is going to bring up a third and two from the Toronto 14-yard line. Wow. Norman, we saw at the other end of the field, perhaps the conditions aren't great for short field goals. Are they going to go for it, or are they going to go and keep their offense in the field? I see Brady Ruoff is staying on the sidelines. The offense is out there. It's going to be a handoff to Crawford going up the middle. This is big time, baby. And Crawford picks up just enough to get a first down. Picks up three yards there on on the play. It's going to be first and 10. Hamilton from the Argos 11-yard line. So the Tiger Cats can get a new pair of new set of downs without scoring a touchdown here. Marler holding onto the ball. He dumps it off for a screen pass. It's complete to Crawford for five yards. They've got six yards to go to get into the end zone. And they pick up five. Wow. Just like I was saying, they got 10 yards down the field. So they are going to get a first and goal from the one yard line coming up here. Norman, what is what is Hamilton doing here that is giving fits to our Toronto Argonauts? I'm really surprised by these calls. You know, we, we would expect more conservative runs, but uh, I think the Argos are still recovering from that long pass, that bomb out of nowhere that... They thought they could contain Hamilton by protecting against the run, but now they see there's a new threat that they hadn't considered. But no threat for a long pass right now because they only have one yard to go. Who knows? Maybe they will try to throw it deep to the back of the end zone. How about no? And Marler with the quarterback keeper. And Bruce Clark 
is there to say, hello, Marler, stop talking about things that happened in Montreal discotheques that was told in confidence. I do not forgive you, sir, I believe is what Clark said there. Sir, you are no gentleman. And you, miss, are no lady. Marler, not wanting to take the brunt of any additional hits, he is handing it off now to Crawford. Crawford going right up the middle, and he is into the end zone. So Hamilton is on the board. Rufus Crawford with a rushing touchdown. It That makes it 6-1 to one. Hamilton. We've got Bernie Ruoff coming onto the field for the extra point. And that kick is good. So Hamilton grabs the lead here. 7-1 to one with 9 minutes to go in the f- second quarter. What ho there, listener. Edward Welch here. Thank you for coming to my parlor. Please take a seat. Now, where were we? Yes, Eaton. It was at Eaton where I first heard the term Argonauts. We were studying the myths of Jason and the Argonauts in their quest for the Golden Fleece. Set in pre-Trojan War Greece around 1300 BC, the story has been told many times. We happen to be reading the Argonautica, by Apollonius Rhodesus, or Apollonius of Rhodes. Now, we will cover this story in more detail at a later date in a format befitting its epic nature, but suffice it to say, it involved a young man of great lineage who was denied his rightful title from birth and was forced to grow up far from home under the mentorship of a wise centaur. Now, as I sat in my cold stone room at Eaton, This story spoke to me, and I was inspired by the tale of this man, Jason, who banded together with a group of other exceptional young men to transcend their individual wishes, to come together and find common purpose in the quest for an elusive goal. From that day forth, I dedicated myself to finding my own Argonauts so that I could feel such purpose. Okay, welcome back, everybody. So Hamilton drove all the way down the field and pushed it into the end zone. They have grabbed a 7-1 to lead here against the hometown Toronto Argonauts, and Bernie Ruoff is staying on the field to kick the ball off to the Argonauts. Kick is up. That is a deep kick. That is a deep kick, folks. That is a 65-yard kick. Preston Young gets the ball at his own goal line. And Preston Young gets very little there, only a five-yard pickup on the return. So the Argos, not only being down six points, are also pinned deep in their own end zone, and they will be starting this drive at the five-yard line. Well, I think that is the best kickoff that we have yet seen in the Canadian Armchair Football League, really pinning them down. We certainly didn't need more things going in Hamilton's favor, but uh, apparently the kicking game is helping them out here. We have Jackson onto the field. He has 105 yards to go. Yeah, well, that ain't nothing but a thing. Will he try to get it all at once? The answer to that is no. He is handing the ball off to Metcalf. It is a run from option. Once he gets some space between him and his own end zone. And Metcalf picks up five. So that is going to bring up second and five from the Argos 10-yard line. I was kind of looking forward to seeing a safety there. We have yet to see a safety in this league. At least not in any of the games that we have broadcast. That's absolutely true, Norman. So Jackson, with a little bit of space behind him now, will he feel a little bit more emboldened to go for a more aggressive play call? Of course, that's speaking as a neutral. Speaking as an Argos fan, I am looking forward to a... Uh, that would be a 100-yard pass just about now. would be great. That would. That would. So let's see here. We have Jackson handing the ball. Yes, he is handing the ball off to Metcalf. It is a sweep to the left. And Metcalf picks up six. So just able to squeeze by and stretch 
past that first down marker, that's going to be first down Toronto. When you're backed up like that, it's it's such a huge first down to get when you get that first first down to get yourself out of your own end zone. Absolutely. So with six minutes remaining in the second quarter, we have Jackson handing it off right back to Metcalf again with an off right tackle. And Metcalf gets stuffed for no gain there on the play. So disappointing there from the Argos at their own 16-yard line. It's going to be second and 10. There is a lot of crunching of bones and giant 1980s-style shoulder pads right now. This is just a crunch on the field. And of course, by that, Norman, you mean the those giant uh, contemporary shoulder pads that we are so used to seeing every day because, hey, that's what that's what people are wearing these days. That's football. I can't imagine any. How can you play football without shoulders magnified to at least three times uh, the human shoulder size? Absolutely. It's just like those guards that I would see at Buckingham Palace as a boy with those giant hats to intimidate the opposition. Well, can you imagine playing football in a beef eater uniform? Now, that would be something. <laughs> I think I will just stick to the gin. Okay, so Jackson. You can use that, uh, like the hat is so tall, you kind of use it for like spearing in, in some way. I got to say, I mean, if you're, uh, say, a defensive tackle, that would be a good way to attempt to tip the ball. It'd be very difficult for the quarterback to see over your head and see down the field. And wow, yes, you and and then you could even yeah, you could block with it, and you could headbutt with it, and you can even take it off and catch the ball with it. Wouldn't that be beautiful? That's a good point. Our player is allowed to remove part of their equipment and use it to to secure the ball. In all the games I've ever broadcast, I've never seen a player take off his helmet and then catch the ball within the confines of said helmet. But that would be quite a sight. Well, in the old days, it would have just been a fun play. But, you know, these days with all the safety stuff, you know, they 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 have a little bit less of a sense of humor about these things. Absolutely. Don't get you started on safety. So we have Jackson, who has been looking at the sidelines. He's saying, let's go. And Jackson going for a long pass on second and 10 here from their own 16-yard line. Jackson is looking for Greer over the middle, and that ball is intercepted. It has been intercepted by David Shaw, the defensive back of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And Greer is able to recover and bring down Shaw after only a gain of five. So, wow, that is not the way the Argos wanted to get back into this game. Hamilton pinned the Argos deep and the Argos turned over the ball. Wow. Salutations, dear listener. It's your new man, Todd Gray here, checking in from the road. Since Ron left me behind at the Harveys in Kingston, I've been on the hunt for the perfect interview. I was on a high after sitting down with the Queen, but that excitement has faded, and I'm back out here riding the Greyhound, looking for my next big score. Shuttling from Paris to Vienna, Copenhagen to London. Dublin to Brussels. Yes, that's right. I've been all over southwestern Ontario on this bus trip. I'm reaching out to you to ask if you have any leads on who I can interview or feedback on my past interview. Did I get something wrong? Did I get something right? Please reach out to me at third and roll, all one word, at gmail.com. Hmm, don't usually see an ampersand in a phone number, but... Oh, well. Well, I see my bus is getting ready to ship out. I've met a group of five young women from England on this trip so far, and they're waving at me to hurry up and get on the bus. So until next time, dear listener, Todd Gray, out. So Marler with a pass from option, and that ball is incomplete. 
incomplete. Ron Southwick was able to fly over the middle and slap that ball down to the ground. But wait a minute. There's a flag on the. Pardon me. There is no flag on that play. Okay, it looks as though the referee has picked up his flag and put it back in his pocket, and he is saying, just wait until next time. Just a flag test, ladies and gentlemen. Wanted to make sure that uh, it was the correct color, you know, that it had a good, good flight on it. He seems satisfied with the performance of the laundry. And we are satisfied, too. Okay, so Hamilton, with their offense on the field here, it's, this is now second and 10 from the Argos 36-yard line. Marler going for the long pass that was so successful earlier in the game. Clark is running him down. Clark is running him down. That passer is trapped. And Marler breaks it around the corner and he picks up, wow, picks up the first down. He picks up 20 yards there on the play. They are really having some back and forth between those two. These former nightclub companions are really putting on a show and really getting under each other's collars. Well, you don't leave much when you miss, do you, Batman? That's what the game's all about. With that, it's going to be first and ten. Hamilton from the Argos 16 yard line and that brings us up to This is the three minute warning. Okay, this is the three minute warning folks. We will be back right after this You're listening to third and roll. Can I say the same thing but in Tamil? We are here under the three minute warning just a reminder that the clock stops after every play within the three minute warning Hamilton has the ball at the Argos 16 yard line. They are up seven to one and Hamilton looking to take command of this game and take control of the East division. It's kind of like the attitude of a procrastinator, right? When you for the first 12 minutes for the, well, for the first 27 minutes of the half, you can just kind of like, yeah, waste a little bit of time. No worries. Let a few seconds fall off. But as soon as you only have three minutes left, then there is no more wasting time. Every single second is accounted for. This makes up for me showing up drunk. So we've got Marler going for an end run, handing it off to Crawford, and he gets no gain there on the play. Bruce Clark having a fun afternoon here saying, how do you do Rufus? We all know Rufus. Everybody loves Rufus. So Marler keeping the ball in his hands now. This is a pass him option. He is looking for Clarkson in the end zone. And that ball is picked off. Preston Young in the end zone with the ball. Intercepted. Is this the change in momentum that the Argos have been waiting for? Let's see if Young can do anything on the return. And Young brings the ball out of the end zone and gets tackled at the Argos six yard line. Now, is there a possibility that he could simply just go down in the end zone rather than attempting to bring the ball out? Because if I was Preston Young, I would not have attempted to take that ball out of the end zone. But I don't believe that it's possible within the rules of this game. Well, the rules pedants are scrambling. I believe uh, rule number three, if an interception occurs in the end zone, the player may choose to place the ball on his 25-yard line, or he may attempt to run the ball out of the end zone by dicing again. If he does not get out of the end zone, the ball is dead and scrimmaged at his own 25-yard line. So say the rules. So in this particular occasion, Preston Young, without knowing the rules, just went ahead and ran the ball out. Whereas I suppose he had the choice where he could have simply gone down in the end zone. So that will be something that Willie Wood will be talking to him and the rest of the team at halftime. Remember, you do have that option. Learn your rules. You better learn your rules. Well, as much as it is clearly a complete mistake by the defender Preston Young there, I do applaud his performance within the spirit of how I believe football should be played because I believe the touchback rule is completely against the spirit of football. You do not give a free 25 yards to say, oh, it's getting a little bit close to your end zone. That seems a little uncomfortable. Let's give you a little 25 yards just so you have some more breathing room. That's not football. 
Thank you, Norman. Welcome back, everybody, with two minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the first half. The Argos have the ball at their own six-yard line and are looking to get some type of points here going into the half. We have Jackson, who is going for a screen pass, and that ball is complete. As complete, that was a wide receiver screen to Terry Greer, who was able to advance the ball 17 yards and picks up an additional five after the reception. So that is a 22-yard pickup there. Greer, I've been looking for you everywhere. Another big play to give some breathing room. In fact, they moved up just where the touchback would have been. They've now cleared themselves up to that point. And they've got a little bit of confidence having completed some successful plays. So they're with now two minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Jackson is going to go for a run from option, handing it off to Metcalf. And Metcalf gets stuffed for no gain there on the play. Another crunch. So this is bringing up second and 10 now for the Argos. Jackson is not dissuaded. He's going right back to Metcalf, this time with a pitch out to the right-hand side. That is only a two-yard pickup. That is going to bring up third and eight. Two minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the second quarter. They are not going to go for it on third and eight in their own end zone. So we have coming out onto the field. Zenon Andrushishin. He is on getting ready to punt. And it is a real boomer there from Zenon. That is a 55-yard punt. And Hamilton is able to get the ball at their own 25-yard line. And then they advance the ball by 10. So, it's going to be 1st and 10 Hamilton from their 35-yard line with a minute and 50 seconds remaining in the first half. Greetings from the desk of Dr. Footius Balunicus. The game of camping or camp ball was a popular form of football played in medieval East Anglia, yet continued to be played into the early 19th century. As described by Edward Moore in 1823, each party has two goals, 10 or 15 yards apart. The parties, 10 or 15 on a side, stand in line facing each other. An indifferent spectator throws up a ball midway between the confronted players and makes his escape. The rush is to catch the falling ball. He who first can catch or seize it speeds home, making his way through his opponents and aided by his own sidesman. If caught and held, he throws the ball to some less beleaguered friend, more free and more in breath than himself who, if it be not jostled away by the eager and watchful adversaries, catches it, and he in like manner hastens homeward, in like manner pursued, annoyed, and aided, winning the notch or snotch if he contrive to carry or throw it within the goals. The ball is being handed off to Rufus. Rufus on the reverse, and he picks up 10. He picks up 10, so they are already in business. That is a first down Hamilton from their own 45-yard line. You know, a 10-yard run is just about the perfect play in football. It's like exactly what you need to get get that first down. You're running the ball. If you can make 10-yard runs, just keep doing it all day. So with a minute and 30 seconds remaining in the half, Hamilton from their 45-yard line. Rufus Clawford, with a run from option, picks up five. So it's going to be second and five from their own 50-yard line, with a minute and 20 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Marler here going for the short pass, and that ball is incomplete. Incomplete there on the play that is going to bring up... The down. So with a minute 10 to go, they are... We have Bernie Ruoff coming on to punt. The punt it up. And this was another shanked kick here from Bernie Ruoff. That's only a 35-yard punt. 
Argos catching the ball at their 25-yard line. The Argos are able to advance the ball five yards. There's a flag on the play. Let's go down to the referee. The ruling on the field is blocking from the rear, clipping on the return team. That is a 15-yard penalty. It'll be first down Toronto, but the ball will be pushed back 15 yards. Wow, well, very unfortunate here for the Argos. So late in the second quarter. Yeah, it's a big 15 yards difference with so little time left to now be backed up to their own 15-yard line. With only 50 seconds remaining, that basically makes that shanked punt a pretty decent punt. It turns a 35-yard punt into a 50-yard punt, and that's a distance that any coach will take on any punt. Your shot. Okay, so Jackson now, he is going for the long pass. And that ball is going down over the middle to Greer, and that ball is incomplete. Incomplete there on the play. David Shaw was able to disrupt that throw and catch between Jackson and Greer. So that, yeah, that break- was a beautiful throw. I mean, beautiful spiral deep down the field, but good coverage on that play. I mean, the defender just didn't give him a chance. So with 40 seconds remaining, it's second and 10 Argos. Jackson is handing it off to Metcalf now for an end run. And Metcalf picks up five. So that's going to bring up another third down for the Argos. Third and five with 30 seconds remaining. And Willie Wood is pointing at Big Zed, saying get out there. And Zenon and Shishin is dutifully strutting out onto the field, really taking his time. I like that, dutifully strutting. It's a, it's a good combination of, uh, of attitude there. He's doing his duty, but he's doing it with pride. I kick. So Zenon, Andrew Shishin on with the punt. He really walloped that ball. That was a 60-yard punt. If this game was decided based on punting, the Argos would have a great lead, but that is not the way this league works. So Hamilton receives the ball at their own 30-yard line, are able to advance it by two yards. So, 15 seconds remaining in the first half. It'll be first and 10 Hamilton from the 32-yard line. Yeah, the kicker really came through there for the Argos. They needed a long punt there. Now, just pushing Hamilton out of any convenient scoring range. Marler going for a pass from option. And that ball is incomplete. Incomplete there. That was overthrown to Clarkson down the right seam. It's going to bring up second and 10 with 10 seconds remaining in the first half. So Marler with the pass to Clarkson right back to him. That's a 25 yard pickup. And Clarkson picks up an additional two on the play. So there are. Wow, that brings up a first down at the Argos side of the field. They are on the Argos 50-yard line. There are now five seconds remaining in the first half. So time for one last play. And who is coming out onto the field? Norman, who's coming out on the field? Here we go. Nothing like these long field goals to really bring out that feeling of, of distance. They're really... How do you describe that feeling of that long field goal? You get a faint howling wind. You imagine the lonely walk of the kicker to the center. Nothing but those faraway goalposts. And somehow he tries to bridge that distance in a single motion. So we've got Bernie Ruoff coming onto the field from his own 51-yard line. That works out to being a 58-yard field goal. So that ball is up, it is hanging up there in the air, and it falls just short. And Preston Young is returning the field goal. I believe that's the first time we've actually had a field goal return this year, Norman. And he is able to bring it up to the 13-yard line. And with that, that is the final play of the first half. It was a tight, defensive, might we say crunchy, first half of football. Next time on Third and Roll. He has his first 14 plays already mapped out in his head. He will be calling those plays no matter what is happening on the field. An unprecedented experiment being conducted by the Argos here. Ron, would it surprise you to know that I am still sad and still scared? 
Third and Roll is an independent Canadian football board game podcast recorded in Toronto, Ontario in 2020. Today's episode features the voices of Spencer, Alex, and Subi. This works for me. Thanks, Subi. This episode was edited by Spencer Adams from Toronto. Our cover art was illustrated by Bryce Hall. If you'd like to support the show, please tell a friend or leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher you use. You can reach us on Twitter at Third and Roll or by email at Third and Roll, all one word, at gmail.com. Our theme music is Magic Mountain by Jazzar, used through a Creative Commons attribution license at freemusicarchive.org. New episodes every Wednesday. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on Third and Roll. I'm not an afterthought, Spencer, but I'll move on.